It's been called the most toxic war in history. Special measures were taken to protect troops because of fears that Saddam Hussein would use chemical or biological weapons. As well as antidote pills and unlicensed vaccines, soldiers were also exposed to depleted uranium and pesticides. Kerry Fuller's hairdresser has to come to him. A man who once fought for Britain now battles to walk to the end of his street. He suffers from constant pain in his joints. The muscles around his heart have wasted and in 2004 he had a stroke. This person in these pictures, you know, that's not who I am now. A lot of us feel it would, it would have been far much better had we not have come back, had, had we been killed in action. 20 years on, thousands of those who served are still sick and veterans like Kerry feel they've been abandoned. We had hoped that once good evidence had been found in the States that this government would have had the good, or this country, would have had the good grace to say, well, that's good enough for us. But unfortunately, no government to date has been willing to do that. No one here at the Ministry of Defence was willing to be interviewed, but the Ministry has given us a statement saying research has indicated there is no illness specific to Gulf veterans. We have long accepted, it says, that some of the veterans are ill and some of their ill health may be related to their Gulf service. Kerry Fuller has no doubt his illness is a result of the war and he's angry at how he's been treated. To get a war pension, veterans have to claim separately for each of their symptoms. He says he's been through several tribunals for just £45 a week. Caroline Hawley, BBC News.